So um, welcome to the Microlearning Meetup. I'm delighted to be here today with Aya. And mm -hmm. um, Hi, Guy. Hello, Aya. Aya, why don't you introduce yourself very quickly? Well, um, a quick introduction. So my name is Aya and I've been like, you know, a very, very deep enthusiast when it comes to learning and also people development. Um, and right now I am working as a learning and development manager in Indonesia that, and also I've got like some side hustles as a content developer, um, with Robert, um, one of the presenter before, and also, um, a course developer as well. So it's like side hustles. <laughs> That's side cool. hustle. Fantastic. Side hustles are everywhere these days, I think. I think they keep us sane and uh, engaged. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm all for side hustles, as the microlearning meetup is as well. Um, yeah. So so today I'm delighted you know, to welcome you. And this is something we've touched on before, but it's the mm -hmm. first time we're actually going to uh, talk about it um, person to person, in not quite in real life, but um, in... in okay. it, in this wedding uh, video I, I don't know anyway this is i mean this is a new way of life so this is a real life situation it's just not in person exactly. well in person yes but not physically in person exactly exactly you can see why i was struggling to say it but there we go <laughs> so today what we're going to talk about is neurodiversity and mm. and micro learning and it's it's not something that's often kind of put together um, yeah. I've not necessarily found that much about those two things yes. when they are mentioned in the same breath. So, so my first question to you, an easy one, it's not really that easy to start oh. with, is um, why does neurodiversity matter? Why does it matter so, that we are even having this wow. conversation? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you might have realized if you've noticed like some, I think, couple of months, even like the last... I think within the two years that we had this virtual meetings and everything, neurodiversity is kind of like on the rise. People are talking about it. Finally, someone's speaking up about it, but it's still not spoken about enough. That's that's the problem. That's why we really have to put that in perspective before we start going anywhere like deeper into the topic. And um, also, because of the crisis that we've been through together, it's 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 never the the more perfect time where we start talking about how to be more inclusive, how to actually embrace diversity. The the problem is like most people still believe that diversity is all about hey what race and like what color of your skin and then what what other things other things that that physically visible for you. And like disabilities, like how visible your disabilities are. But when it comes to neurodiversity, it's something that happens in your mind that people sometimes tend to just keep to themselves because they think that it's probably something wrong with me. And this is just me being weird, not someone else's. So like in order to actually, hey, it's what happened in your mind, it's valid because it's not just you, it's someone else's experience as well. So this struggle needs to be acknowledged to actually be addressed by people and then to actually be, you know, something that we can talk about, something that we can acknowledge and also facilitate because that's, that's just it. When you facilitate learning, you need to acknowledge all the other constraints, if you want to call it, <laughs> all the other things that, that that kind of push back on learning progress. That's that's why it's it's quite, you know, new topic, but then it's not really new because it's been there forever. You just don't hear about it much because people tend to keep to themselves about that because who would want to be judged as weak. You just don't work hard enough. You just don't try it hard enough. And it's um that's very uncomfortable to say. <laughs> sure. And, and and has that been your experience that, in a sense, you've been forced through a, a sort of a way of learning that yeah. perhaps, you know, there's always been tension there or, or friction for, for you? Mm, it's, it's certainly 
been, you know, rough, I think, if you want to call it that. If that's, I think, an understatement. Because I used to think that people would think the same way I do. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem. Like, um, I used to have a problem with, you know, understanding in a way that why could people see the way I see it? How, how is it not so logical in their way of seeing things? And I'm like, I thought everyone feels this way. I thought everyone's experiencing this the same way. And then I, and then it's kind of like a slap. That's a very nice one. Uh, it's like you're just pushed back that, no, no, people don't think the way you think. People don't experience things. You know, the, you, it's just you. You, you are very sensitive about things. You are thinking about it too much. You go so much into details that people don't even care about. You're, you're like an alien. I would, I, would, I would usually refer to myself as an alien because things that I care about so much, people don't. And that, that put a lot of obstacle, like a huge obstacle in my learning because my learning would usually be something that includes a lot of deep conversation into things and people are like hey you know you don't you're not supposed to go that deep you're not supposed to go and connect everything and then like make everything more complicated than it already is and 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 it's like and i would then start holding back on things because i thought I'm just a troublemaker. I'm like making things more complicated. Let's not do that. Let's let's just stop doing that. You're just thinking too much into it. And it's like, you can see where everyone's like, mm, it's not something people would really act, just, you know, open about in, in just one go. Like, mm, no, 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 you're just not going to do that. In my case, it doesn't actually stop me from learning. It it's It's more like stopping myself from connecting with other people. Because um, in my case, it's it. I can just learn in in a way that I can just absorb knowledge and then read by myself. That's it. But then it stops me from actually being able to connect with other people because my my way of learning is going to be different from other people's way of learning. And then sometimes I find it difficult to just communicate that. But some other people um, that I'm aware of as well instead of being seen as you know gifted being seen as like they they have a lot of you know achievements at school because you know they have a hard time connecting with people so all they can do is read by themselves and they just score everything high but like some other people are struggling because they have a hard time just to even keep up with everything else and and that's sad because people would refer to you know them as them oh yeah that's that's their they're, they're the difficult part that's okay it's always like that it's always a, and it's saddened me because in a way I relate to how they struggle with it but then also people don't see me as having the same struggle it's 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 what they call as high functioning when when you're high functioning People don't think that you struggle at all. You're like you. You achieved everything. You've 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 got your scholarship. You've got you you work just fine. You you talk. You you have public speakings and everything. But then they don't see the struggle beneath that. How much effort I need to actually put just to be able to write something out there because I am so so afraid of how people are going to be rejecting the ideas. Because that's just how it's been the whole time. It's like, no, 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 no. Don't think about it that much. Don't feel about it that much. And and everything's just like, okay, am I too much? That's what, look, I'm going so much about it. No, yeah, no, thank you for, for sharing that. And, and what I'm curious about is... So, so now you're you're sort of developing content. You're developing courses. Do you do that with the history of your experience? Mm -hmm. You sort of one eye on that, in a sense of how might it be for that person who went through a similar or the type of experiences I went through, and 
And what does that lens bring to the way you put that content or the thought that goes into it? Mm, so that's where micro learning goes. Like that's where micro learning comes into play. It's it's sort of like I am lucky enough to be in a position where I can influence how things are designed. It's like I can bring that conversation to the table. Like, hey you're you're here to facilitate someone else's learning but like before thinking about how you want to bring that you need to think about how that person needs your help to actually learn so it's like shifting the lenses instead of like thinking what am i gonna bring to them is into like what do you need me to bring to them and how do you how do they need me to bring it to them so it's like, like instead of like that's the problem is when when i mean because i'm right now designing and everything a lot of times the designing process is happening in in isolation to those who need that it, it it's it's just like it's a funny thing because you would need to see them and to talk to them to actually communicate what do you need from me as a person to be able to plan something that caters to their need. But in a lot of process, most of the designing happens in isolation, either that in the school context or like university, you can you can see it in even like corporate trainings, a lot of the training materials and the designs and everything are done in isolation to those who actually need your help. We do have training needs analysis, yes, but it's mostly focusing on the job needs, like what skill do they need, what knowledge do they need, but like in order to actually get that point where they are learning, what learning needs do they do they have as a person specifically who's doing that very job, that's the thing that's missing, that's the link that's like not connecting at all. And, and, it, and that's what I'm trying to bring into the context in, in sort of like, you know, in a way that, hey, what if you start talking more to the person, you start getting more data, but not in a sense of data that you're just collecting in numbers. No, but like talk to them, communicate with them in a way that they are actually becoming aware of their needs because people like it or not, don't always get what they need in a way that when you ask people, what exactly do you need me to help you with? It's not an easy way to answer. I, I got I got that, like one of my counseling session, like coaching session, um, my therapist back then, she asked me, what do you need? And that, <laughs> that's like, what? what is this question like why i've never actually thought about it i've never actually gone to the point where i'm like oh it got me thinking so deep days over days and days and days and i simply couldn't communicate what my needs were so like it's never easy like to actually do needs analysis no because the person who needs it sometimes are in the headspace where they cannot tell what they need. They're like in a panic mode, especially when it comes to job training, because usually they are in a job training because their performance were like below the average. They're not performing as well. So they were put in a training because they think that I'm not performing well. I'm panicking here. And you want me to think about my needs? Like, I just need to survive this. This is my livelihood. This is my... I need money and then and that's the thing people who need help are usually in a headspace where they cannot ask for help and that's the sad thing about it and 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 bringing the conversation like building that trust from the start and and having people who are aware of it from the start to to kind of like start building that communication start building that before there's even the need for it that's the thing, because some people are taking so long to open up and some people even need so much help to realize that they need help. And, and, and that's the thing. 
just bring into you know everything communication with so, so this idea of helping somebody t to learn you know and i love this idea of helping to learn thinking about you know when you're actually putting that that course together or that micro learning together mm -hmm. How would you design a course for yourself that takes your needs into account? How would you do that if you were the well, learner? Yeah, if I were the learner. See, here's the thing. I love questions. <laughs> so most of the most, most of the courses that I designed as well, it starts with questions. Because that's the thing that I want to tap into. Are you interested in this? Like, would you would you actually connect with this? Because questions, people have a lot of questions and you need to find that one question that actually, oh, I've, 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 I've made this question before. I've, I've actually asked this question before. That, that thing is, is kind of like the key to unlocking that. And, and micro learning has that because you can ask a different question for every chunk of your learning to kind of like, hey, I'm holding your hand here we can get to the next part of it. We can get to the next part of it. Are you still interested in this? Are you still engaged in this? Is this really something you still need? Yes. If it's not, then that's where we branch out. Like we change it. The problem with changing is it's never easy when it's a huge chunk, but when it's micro learning, changing becomes something that's easier to do changing you remove the barrier to change you remove that oh my god i've gone so deep into this i can't change anymore it's like that whole course took me months to build and now how am i supposed to change this that that thing you put into it the effort into it it's understandable so that micro learning makes it so much easier for you to kind of like tinker with it and like adjust with it based on the needs. You can have same content, you can have same materials, but just different questions posed into that is gonna bring a lot of difference. So in my case, if someone wants to actually, if I'm designing a course for myself, I'd start with questions, questions and questions and questions, and then I can go into something like connecting, mind mapping, and then everything. And it's like that, aha moment that eureka moment where you go like oh shoot that reminds me of that and i can do this and i can do that and then that's where like oh and i'm like searching for them myself afterwards so you need to find the questions which questions would bring you to the next part of it if that question doesn't work change the question if that part doesn't work change that part only so it's 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 just the amazing part of um, micro learning. I think it was just like, mm, yeah, removing barriers to change. No more huge stake of just changing things. It's into something like I'm gonna change this part and see if that works with you, and then you communicate again. That's the part where I love about like you know micro learning. So with that in mind, and, and if we look at this from a sort of a corporate training perspective, right? Okay. For, for the most part, I would imagine that corporates are going to create one learning with one type of learner in mind, which is everyone, because everyone uh -huh. is, you know. So, so how, how, how do we overcome that sense of, I want you to design for me, with me in mind, mm -hmm. there's lots of me's. Every single different person is a me, yeah. right? A corporate can't design for for the it or it's not that they can't. They're not going to design for the need of every single different type of person. That mm -hmm. that simply isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And whilst micro learning might be or offer possibilities, they're still not going to create probably thirty different types of micro learning for 30 different types of learner. So how do we overcome or how do we deal with that tension, I guess, between mm. co cost on the one hand, the learner on the other hand, you know, and recognizing the different needs of that learner? Well, it's, it's a very difficult, 
this is a very difficult question. <laughs> this is the heavy part of it. Because by the end of the day, um, when you're designing for a corporate training, it's like how much cost, like, you know, versus how much benefit you're going to get from that, like how much return you're going to get from that. And that's the thing that's tricky about it. Because like you said, there's a lot of me in that with, and that me needs different things. And that me is going to need, um, you know, some specific help with their learning. And um, usually corporate training doesn't necessarily want to address those needs. So here's the thing, micro learning, yes, it has a lot of potentials. It's got plenty of things that you can change and everything. But it's never going to be one, you know, simple recipe for everyone, because that, that's the that's defeating the whole purpose after all. But having the awareness, like most of the corporate learning now, they, they, they are starting to, you know, to get to the point where they're like, hey, we're trying to invest in learning and development. That's the first step. Yes. But then they haven't really been very, you know, investing into it um, in a sense. But in a way, we can start by addressing those needs, like those training needs from the start need to be actually very comprehensive. That's one thing. So instead of just, hey, I'm sending a survey for everyone to click on and just click, 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 right, 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 and everything. No, but add interview into it, add some qualitative data into it, add some in person, well, in person, like how we are doing now, <laughs> add some in person communication into that, that, and then you address people who are, you know, the manager of that one particular team. So there's a representative for each and every one. Because that's the thing that 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 tends to get, you know, tricky. People think that the training, the design and everything, the, the, the way you address the needs start when you actually design the course. No, it starts by acknowledging that from the needs analysis, from the needs assessment. So how do we start with that? The needs assessment needs to be changed first. It needs to include not just the job skill analysis, not just the needs for that particular job, but like for that particular team, for that particular manager, for that particular uh, branch of, of places. And it goes down from there, like trickling down from there, because it's never going to be easy. It's never going to be going to that person specifically right from the start. But the start itself needs to start somewhere. And that's how we do it. Start by acknowledging there is supposed to be a representative for each different group, each different team. And that goes from there. And then by asking the people who are, you know, the manager for that team and everything, they could put in, you know, inputs on needs that happen, you know, from the people who are in that team, because they are the managers of that team, they're supposed to know the needs on that one. At least they have more insight than the people who are like, God knows how many layers upstairs they are. And, and, and those people won't need, they won't know that because they would see numbers, they would see performance going up and down, up and down. And that's where the needs come from. So add more humans into it. But like, it's never going to be a step like, I'm going to start this. And then a month later, everyone's needs going to be like, <laughs> no, but like, start by acknowledging that by giving more voice, more agency to the people who are learning, who need this learning. And, and that's where we start. And then start from there. And we're going down one person at a time. And I'm like, mm, it's a fun journey. <laughs> I've been trying. <laughs> And, and how much of this is to do with how the content is designed versus or and uh -huh. how the con and how the content is delivered? Because well, often they're two separate in, in yes. you know, often in training organizations, they're, they're two separate things. Mm -hmm. So it's more about 
most of the time because it's one thing the job is the same you you need to have the same information delivered to different people so most of the time in a training corporate training mostly they have the same content they they have the same information they have the same knowledge it's just the way you deliver them is going to be the change like like when you ask me about how am i going to change things and how am I going to design things for myself? I'm going to start with a question. But not many people want to start this with questions. They're like, am I going to be having problems? I'm supposed to know the answer to this and and things like that. It's 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 more the more on the way you deliver things. It's more on the way like, hey, I know you like that one. So I'm going to start sending this way, that way. And then and, and, and that's the part. And also, it's not only limited to, you know, learning in e-learning when you go like digital learning, but there's also the way you go into trainings, in-person training, where you have like your trainers and everything. How do you actually make sure that all the things that you put in the training aren't just there because, you know, you need to put a training hour and everything and everything, but they're there because this thing that you put, th this experience that you put together in a training needs to happen for it to actually work. The experience itself is very, very crucial. And it's something that's related to not the content, but the way you deliver things, the way you facilitate their learning. And, and, and it's just like, Oh, okay. So when you have to actually weigh in whether a fancy content or like, do you know the knowledge and everything? Nowadays, you can just Google everything. But like the experience with that you learn, it's learning is not an event. Learning is experience. Learning is continuous. It needs to be like that for it to actually work. It's never and it's never going to be like, okay, this is there's this learning and it happens that one snap and that happens you you're never going to be like pinpoint on that no because it's like you discover something you get peaked your interest gets peaked and then it's like oh maybe that one training doesn't really go into like ah mm, no 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 i haven't got that point yet but then i am still learning because i'm picked my interest picked and then i go and explore some more afterwards so that experience that that kind of like lights up that's the part. So content or delivery, delivery. And, and, and that's another challenge because, you know, in, in that moment when the f facilitators in that room or, or the trainers in that room um, mm -hmm. or, or it's, you know, on, online, mm -hmm. one, they've got to be aware enough to be able to pick up on that moment. That, that That's the first thing. The second thing is then they've got to make a judgment call that says, one, do I have time to go and follow this with this particular person? And three, am I going to invest that time in this one person? So there's all sorts of things for that, that trainer or the facilitator that they've suddenly got to weigh up. At the end of the day, the likelihood is the individual needs of that person are still going to be ignored. Yeah. And, and that's the challenge that, but I think at least, you know, the fact that we're maybe in that needs analysis stage we're acknowledging these potential needs mm -hmm. what one could say we're paying it lip service because we're going to ignore it anyway right that, that's that's the reality but at least mm -hmm. it might be where we are in this day and age at least that may be mm -hmm. a starting point that over time we yeah. will arrive at a sort of a, a learning experience that does recognize the different needs of people. We've actually progressed so much compared to like years, like mm. not even years ago, like just a year ago, like in neurodiversity, we've, we've progressed so much and that a lot of people are like opening up about it. They talk about how they're experiencing things. So that one thing, that one particular, like, you know, experience where, where we start acknowledging only by like, you know, assessing and then acknowledging that there's probably going to be this particular need here even though right now i might not be the person who can facilitate that learning i'm going to be putting that in data still 
it's gonna exist there it's gonna be something that okay it's acknowledged it's there we might not make some progress that much progress in one time but it's a start and and yes there has to be some way of like you know fast tracking everything but it never works well when it comes to fast tracking and then and it's like i don't know it's just that one thing might lead to another like that one person feeling like hey today i got asked about what i need and that got me thinking about it like a long time and i bring that question again and again and again and again to people as well like i asked people what do you need and then they get them thinking and then they, and then they said hey i might i talked to my friend as well and then i asked the same question and that got them baffled just it's like that, that now we're like oh yeah that's that's a deep one even though it's a simple thing that they're like what do you need it's just like that so that one experience when you kind of like have someone who got that point where they have experienced learning it's spreading no matter like how much you want to try to stop it it's spreading and and an internet has a lot of ways of just spreading everything good or bad but um we just need to make sure that a lot more point of starting like the spread and and that's the part that you know we're trying to play in 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 this particular issues that that's the part where i'm trying to put in you know kind of like practice in a way like i can be that one starting point for everyone around me at least that and i think that's been working quite you know wonderfully and and, and maybe that's the starting point you know just this the simple question what do you need because that in 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 a sense puts everybody on need, yeah it but it puts every, it puts everybody on the same level, mm -hmm. you know, whilst recognizing the similarities and the differences, it, and it's there. Start thinking, yeah, absolutely. It, it's then comes down to what do we do once we've got that information, and 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 yeah. I guess that's the challenge that we're all trying to work out. Mm -hmm. But we have to start somewhere, and and um, like acknowledging your needs. So, what do you need? What do I need? Well, I'm aware of the time. So what I need is to bring this, to, unfortunately, to a close. But what I'd love to do, because I think we've we barely scratched the surface, is yeah. if, if, if you'd be um, willing and open to it, I'd love to get you back for another conversation at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but this has been, it's it's been, you know, it's it's been really a, a great sort of um, 30, about 30 minutes or so of just, as I said, scratching the surface, learning a little bit more about you, a bit more about actually neurodiversity and how it relates to, to learning. So, um, Aya, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Guy, and I'd love to be here again.